Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the new-ish legendary tier Italian battleship, the Cristoforo Colombo. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Our commander is Paolo de Revel, or Paolo de Revel, uh, however you want to call it. Paolo de Revel, Paolo de Revel. Let me know. Uh, either way, we are running a full secondary build, guys. This is not an accuracy build. This is a secondary meme build because I want an Italian battleship to be fun. And uh, so one way or another, I'm going to try to make that a thing. Uh, we have Haruna up here and we have Franz von Hipper, both of which are helping our secondaries. We are running not one for the nuisance. We are running Porcupine. We're running On Second Thought. We're running Master Mechanic. And we're running Fight Fire with Fire. Now, for the actual build out, we have secondary battery mod 2. We are running steering gears mod 2. We are running concealment system mod. And we are running the epic secondary battery mod 3 to get those secondaries going even faster late game. All right. Now, we have six heals with this build, which is something ridiculous. Okay, so don't don't for, don't sleep on it. All right, six heals is insane. But the caveat, obviously, is you gotta you, you gotta live long enough to use those heals. So uh, if you're gonna use this build, highly recommend that you like try to space your pushes out. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys kind of uh, a, a match where things go kind of crazy, and you can see just how quickly you can lose a lot of hit points in this thing, and to where it becomes a big problem but uh, we do have three exhaust smoke generators as well which is very nice these are actually i feel like longer duration than most exhaust smokes but 45 seconds uh is pretty pretty nice you get three of them and then of course we're running the enhanced secondary targeting uh which allows us again because secondary build now because we're running a secondary build i like to go with a little bit extra range so i run an epic battle booster on any of my secondary build battleships just to get that extra little bit of range so that you can at least reach out and touch something if you need to uh italian unity flag with a uh, regia marina camo a little throwback old school style on the regia marino i went ahead and made it a uh, permanent camo i didn't use the historical camo this time uh, for specs, survivability, 83,000 hit points, which is very, very low for a legendary tier battleship. Put that in perspective, if we go out and we bring up all of the legendary tier battleships, you will see Burgon, or Burgonia, uh, it has 70,000 hit points, so it's not quite that low. Uh, Schlieffen has 80,000 hit points, so it's right there in the neighborhood of Schlieffen, so kind of Battlecruiser-esque. Uh, obviously, Kerr first, the most hit points in the game, 100,000 base. Uh, Conqueror uh, has low hit points, but huge heals, so again, um, Yama should be 90-something, second highest in the game. Yeah, 90. And then Montana, obviously, is a beef boy as well, 86. So this would be currently the fourth most hit points for the thing so basically it's right in the middle of the pack like it's not low hit points but it's not high hit points either so it's it, it's deceptive but the the amount of heals you get does make up for that if you get a chance to use them and that's a big if because we will go over some of the things that uh this ship you know some of the downsides uh, but 36 percent torque damage reduction is kind of nice you gotta love that uh, but of course, at legendary tier, if you're taking torpedoes, it don't matter what your torp damage reduction is, it's going to hurt a lot. Uh, artillery, you have 16, 381, so 15 inch, 50 caliber, 1934 main guns. Um, they fire out to 17.8 kilometers with this build because of the epic battle booster. Reload is pretty slow because they're quad turrets, uh, so 30.2 seconds. Uh, and that's with the buffs to the reload speed and stuff from Palo de Revel as well as um, the skill on second thought. So it would be even slower than that. 180 degree turn time is pretty awful at 38.3. It's not it's not Conqueror awful, but it's it's not good. Okay, so definitely leaves something to be desired there. HE shell maximum damage 5400 with a 24% chance to set fires. You don't need to use HE very often in this ship. Because you, you'll get plenty of opportunities to slap people with these 16-inch shells, or 16, 15-inch shells. 
AP shell maximum damage is only 11,000 though, and that is one of the biggest problems, um, as we will showcase in a moment. Uh, secondary armament, 90 millimeter, yeah, 90 millimeter, 50 caliber auto, 1939. You get 24 of those reaching out to 10.2 kilometers with this build, reloading in just 4.8 seconds and firing SAP for a maximum damage of 2,000. And then you have the second secondary armament, the 152 millimeter, 55 caliber auto, 1936s. You get 18 of those reaching out to 10.2 kilometers and reloading in 6.8 seconds and they do 3,800 damage with SAP shells. Um, now, AA defense is not bad, but again, not great. 20 millimeter, 70 caliber Beretta 1941s, you get a whole bunch of them. You get 120 of them, and they're doing 124 damage per second, reaching out to just two kilometers though. Then you have the 37 millimeter, 54 caliber Beretta 1938s. You get 16 of those doing 93 damage per second, reaching out to a respectable 3.5 kilometers. So not bad. Nice little mid-range AA there. And then 37 millimeter, 54 caliber Beretta 1939. You get 32 of those doing 153 damage per second, also reaching out to three and a half kilometers. And then you have the 90 millimeter, 50 caliber auto 1939 dual purpose secondaries. You get 24 of them doing 162 damage per second, reaching out to four kilometers. So uh, not a whole lot of AA. It's it's mostly in that three and a half kilometer, four, four kilometer range, which is, it's nice to have that little bit of standoff, but I mean, if you wanted to build this thing for AA, you probably could. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a great AA boat. Okay. Maneuverability is actually respectable. 30.5 knots maximum speed, so solid. Turning circle isn't absolutely horrendous at 960 meters. It feels very much like an Iowa class. Um, slightly worse than an Iowa class, but I think uh, better than the Montana, better than the curve first, obviously, stuff like that. Now, the rudder shift was 18 seconds, but because we're running the uh, the steering gears, we've got that down to 14.4. Um, yeah, so it, it comes in real, real handy to have a little bit faster uh, rudder shift. It's not crazy, but it does help with the, the angling of the ship, which is important in the ship. Um, detectability, or yeah, detectability by sea is 13.6, so decent, uh, especially for a legendary tier battleship. That is pretty good. Um, it's, I want to say, slightly better than Yamato at 13.8, I think Yamato's is, so this would be slightly better. Um, but still, it's a battleship. It's going to be detected, and especially every time you fire your guns. Uh, detectability after firing the main gun or firing in smoke is 10.9 kilometers. That is a number you need to keep in your head at all times, so that when you do get the chance to use that smoke screen, that you know if you're going to be spotted when you pull the trigger. Huge, huge bonus, and of course, guaranteed detectability is always two kilometers. All right. Now I'm going to show you my stats. Uh, don't look at the win rate of the stats and tell, like, let that tell you what this thing is capable of. I promise. The win rate does not reflect the ship in this particular instance. The more I play this ship, the more that win rate is going to go up. I promise. But currently, we've played six battles. We've only won two of them. Uh, main gun accuracy. Again, this is not an accuracy build, but only 38%, which is slightly lower than most of my, my ships. So that's to be expected. But again, you have 16 guns. So accuracy by volume is a true thing. Okay. Now, average results. This is the part that you need to pay attention to. Average kills, 1.2. Okay, pretty pretty normal. A little bit low maybe for a battleship. Uh, damage to ships though, 134,407. Now, obviously, this is a very small sample size. But as you can see, I've been very effective in this ship so far so keep that in mind average xp is 1442 and damage upon uh or potential damage has been 1.5 which is pretty high okay so you can see that i like putting this thing into trouble and so now we're going to take a look at the armor and see why that may not be the best idea so first of all 32 millimeter bow plating as you'd expect uh, so yama does go through it if they aim high however you may have noticed that you also have a is it 50? Why is it not showing? Oh, there it went. It's 60 millimeter extended belt that goes all the way to the bow. 
So if a Yama decides to try to overmatch you and gets greedy and tries to citadel you through the battle like they can other ships sometimes, then they're going to plink, plink, plink all of those shells right off that 60 millimeters of plating. So keep that in mind. It is very, very good. Okay? That being said, this thing also has a little bit of a turtleback armor. Um, but do not rely on it. As with every other Italian battleship, you cannot rely on this turtleback to save you. Will it bail you out occasionally? Absolutely. Will you get yeeted if you go full broadside? Probably. So don't do it. Uh, but honestly, I haven't been citadeled too much in the ship so far. Uh, I've, I've definitely taken a lot of penetration damage, uh, a lot of big hits, and it's not always citadels. And I will go over what we're seeing when we get there. All right, let's go ahead and put the armor back on. So, crap. Okay, so as you can see, the ship is very, very flat armored. Uh, the bow is relatively well angled armor. But the, the side plating, as you can see, very flat. Uh, torpedo ball just slightly angled, but the, the majority of the upper side plating is flat. This is much like the Minnesota, much like the Kansas. It, uh, Conqueror's another one. Uh, this eats penetration all the time. Uh, you have to angle perfectly and then hope for the best. Uh, Deck-wise, you've got pretty much normal deck armor. You don't have to worry too much in terms of... Uh, craziness there you do have giant superstructure but you guys are battleship captains up to this point you guys should know superstructures large hit point pool you're gonna you're gonna take huge chunks of damage when people focus your superstructure if you're bow in which is why we once again go back to the age-old adage of lifting the skirt getting people to think that you're broadside so that you're over angled you want people to shoot at you when you're looking like this and then as you're already turning towards them anticipating the shot Instead of them getting the shot that they want, they end up getting a, a shot like this, where the shells are basically coming in at an auto bounce angle. Uh, but again, keep in mind the upper side plating is incredibly flat armor, so it's not difficult to, uh, to pin this thing for a lot of damage, even at angles that you wouldn't expect. So keep that in mind. Uh, you may not get Citadel. All right, the, the Citadel, surprisingly in this, is mostly below water, as we showed. Like, the, the Citadel isn't bad in this, um, compared to some of the other Italians. You can see it is, it is mostly below water. So you don't take too many Citadels in this ship. But, and then of course you throw on top of that, you get a little bit of a turtleback armor. But, again, I just want to want to reiterate, you may not take the Citadels, but you're going to take huge penetrations. Um... It, it's not it's not a, a particularly preferable situation when you have that much flat armor now let's go to the overview uh guns are plenty high number of guns allows for a lot of damage from a single salvo yes and no yes having that many guns is amazing having the ability to reach out and slap somebody's broadside with 16 guns is always going to be better than having less than 16 guns i don't care what size the guns are but the downside obviously is that you have less punching power so the shells don't explode as hard so you don't do as much damage so despite throwing 16 rounds down range some situations you'll notice that uh, you may end up leaving people with more health than you think you were going to leave them with now this is something that i don't know a whole lot of people have talked about full circle these rear turrets these rear turrets are capable of firing in a 360 degree uh circle why is that important that means they are almost always where you need them when you need them. Despite having a somewhat slow turret traverse, um, I like to have about a 30 second turret traverse. These are a little bit slower than that. But I'm telling you, because of the fact that these are 360 degree turrets, uh, you can look over the left side, get, them, get the guns where you need them. And by the way, this thing has ridiculously good firing angles. Okay? If you're over angling, in this, trying to get the rear rear guns on target, you'll realize that uh, you don't A, need to, and B, that's a bad idea. Uh, this thing has really good firing angles for a battleship, especially high tier battleships. So use that to your advantage. Stay more angled and get your shots off. You can sneakily get those rear turrets on, on board. So uh, highly recommend you try, right? And then of course, exhaust smoke generator can dispense smoke screen, stay hidden, full speed. 
Christopher O. Colombo, a large battleship that embodies the Italian shipbuilding achievements of the early 1940s. The ship is armed with 16 15-inch 381mm guns and a strong secondary battery. She was designed in 1945, never built. But uh, honestly, I don't want to say that this ship is fun, okay? Because if I do, I feel like somebody at Wargaming is going to hear me say that I enjoyed a, an Italian battleship, and they're going to immediately nerf it, just like they did with the Lepanto. Uh, I loved the Lepanto because it's beefy, because it's fun, because of the secondaries go burnt. This is just as much fun and slightly better. And by slightly, I mean a lot better than the Lepanto. Um, but... Like I said, as, as fun as this ship is, um, I don't think it needs a nerf, and I really hope that it doesn't get nerfed by Wargaming, because the Italians deserve to have something fun in their arsenal. Like, yeah, some of the low-tier Italian cruisers can be a meme, especially with the SAP now, but, like, the Italian destroyers after Tier 5 are awful. Let You know, somebody can argue with that if they want, but from Tier 5, or after Tier 5, the Italian destroyers are awful in my opinion. Um, the cruisers are actually decently fun all the way up through. I haven't got a lot of experience in the uh, upper tier upper tier cruisers, but up to the Amalfi, they're actually decent now. Um, I actually enjoy them. But uh, the Italian battleships have always been kind of just obnoxious to play, uh, mainly because they keep like withholding what makes the ships unique and good, and they try to like make them something they're not. And so... Please, Wargaming, don't nerf this ship. Let the Italians have a little bit of fun. Please. And with that, uh, she's a good-looking ship. I don't have any problems with her. I think a uh, pretty modern-looking battleship. You can't really argue with it. I like the Reggie Marino camo on this. I think it, it fits really well with the ship. But uh, let me know what you guys think. And uh, with that being said, let's get into the uh, gameplay. Alrighty, so we are going to be on Shatter. And this match that I'm going to show you is going to be kind of crazy. I don't recommend anybody play the way that I play. But uh, you just got to remember that I play for entertainment value, right? So uh, keep that in mind. But I also like to showcase the strengths and the weaknesses of the ship. When I, when I do these ship showcases, these meet those or, or a path to or anything like that, I like to showcase both the strengths of a ship as well as the weakness. So uh, we're going to try to showcase that in this one. Um, but we're going to push straight ahead. And uh, the first thing you're going to notice is there are no destroyers. None. So, uh, yeah, we have like full reign to do basically whatever we want in this lobby within reason. So we have an Henri IV spawned right in front of us. We also have a Yama on our left, and we're going to start to push forward. And you'll notice pretty quickly that we actually get quite a few battleships join us for our initial push. Now, one thing that I want you guys to keep an eye on is the minimap. I know I say this all the time, but you have to know the numbers of what is around you, right? So if you know that, hey... I've got a cruiser in front of me. They're going to be spotting. They're going to go out to the right. They might spot for us. Um, and then we have several battleships come over here behind us. Like, you got to realize that is a firepower advantage in 90% of situations, right? Unless, of course, the enemy just happens to put all of their battleships in the exact same location in a situation where they're all bowing and we're all bowing facing each other and it's just a gigantic mess, all right? Um, of epic proportions because let's be honest if you get that many battleships like bow into one another would that not be kind of crazy the amount of shells flying back and forth from secondaries from the main guns everybody trying to one-up each other it'd be kind of great until somebody decides to go broadside because you know it would happen it happens all the time this crazy love of mine you know um, but no we're gonna push forward first thing I notice is two destroy or two cruisers right there are several cruisers in this match but two of them are here and the two that are here none of them have torpedoes so the very first thought in my head is okay we got to move forward now the next thing you're going to notice is there is a plane up now we are currently radar so one of those two cruisers definitely has radar still so it's not his plane so that means there's likely another battleship over here but now there's two planes here so that means one of these cruisers is actually a, a not radar cruiser, but a uh, a plane cruiser, which is just 
insanely... It, I don't know. They they all think they're chilly games until they get proven otherwise. But uh, Chili is a great player. He's capable of doing some insane things. Not everybody is. So maybe keep your radar. But in this match, I guess there's nothing to radar, right? Who, who needs to radar anything in this match? Uh, but that being said, we are going to not push around the corner. We want to wait for our teammates to catch up to us, right? The Henri is going to go out wide. He's going to be in a position to spot. I don't want to be focused by what we know is a Yama now. We know there's a Yama there, and we know there's an Alaska and a Worcester. So we want them to make the mistake, right? And that's when we see another battleship all the way in the back. But Worcester decides out of pure insanity that he wants to pull out in front of us. Now, I did not realize until it was too late that he was slowing down to stop. So while we do end up citadeling him, we actually end up six overpinning him because I shot too far forward. If he had uh, just co coasted a little bit longer, we'd have strike him there. Uh, but Worcester's parked broadside in front of everybody. He's, he's trying to go ham on us, but he's not long for this world. Like, you're dead. That was just an idiotic play by that Worcester. I don't know why he thought that was the right play, but it definitely was not. But now he's gone. There's a Yama here. And now I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going to use my smoke. I'm going to come around the corner. They've already radared, right? So I'm going to come around the corner. I'm going to use my smoke and try to get into a position. Now, I was expecting my cruiser to keep this guy lit up. And as you can see, look at the cheek shot that I have here. I am expecting Dev Strike. I take the shot. I get decent accuracy. And we get three Citadels. Six full penetrations, two overpins. Like, we absolutely slammed that yam. But we are now lit up because we're within that 10 kilometer um, smoke firing penalty, obviously. And we are going to take a boatload of damage. Um, we took a lot of damage from the um, guy that's off our bow. And then this guy opens up thinking he can get his rear turret involved before I get my shots off. Uh, unfortunately, he was wrong. And uh, we get the worst possible RNG when it comes to citadeling this Yama. We actually leave him alive, which allows him to once again get some shots in. Fortunately, our teammates come in and uh, are able to get some shots. Now, look at them trying to, like, push here. I am in trouble. All right, I have overextended. I've put myself in a position where I'm trying to stay angled as best I can. But I am, like, freaking... You can see by all the pings that I'm doing that I am freaking the f*** out. I need teams. I need them. I need them yesterday. We've we've done a huge push. Like, don't get me wrong. This is not necessarily a bad push. We got rid of their Yama. That's huge. We've got a GK full broadside parked in front of everybody. So, like, he's not going to be long for this world. We've got their uh, Worcester already gone. Their, their Alaska is on the run. I don't know why people are shooting the Alaska and not shooting the broadside of the Kurt first. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. Somebody shot the Alaska still. But uh, we're trying to get rid of the Kurt first because he's the one with all the secondaries causing me issues. He's the one with the big guns that are causing me issues. So we want him gone as quickly as possible. So we know we're not citadeling him, so we just aim a little bit higher than waterline. We want to get as many hits as possible out of each shot. Uh, one thing I will say that I've noticed out of this thing is a um, lack of hit uh, durability in the main guns. I feel like these these four quad or the yeah these four quad turrets tend to take a lot of um, getting knocked out. Now this second Yama here is a problem. Um, if he kills me, which he very well could at any moment, uh, this game is over, right? Like we've had a good game. We've done everything that we can. Our teammates are starting to move forward, and they're actually taking a beating for us, which is rare. I, I cannot stress that enough. I am so glad that these teammates actually did, did move forward, and not just move forward, but they actually got in front of me to kind of give me a little bit of a, 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 a respite, or a, a res what, what is the word I'm thinking about? A little bit of R&R &R to, to, to recover um, from the beatdown that has just insinuated on us, or ensued on us. But Ruprecht also comes out, takes the lead. We've got San Luis over here coming back to defend. We've got the Yama cornered. He just reversed into an island, so he's stuck. He can't possibly go anywhere. There is a Linen back there as well. But uh, here you can see I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going to shoot the uh, the San Luis here. And notice my my uh, distance to the, the Yama. I'm going to go ahead and smoke up here and try to disappear. But unfortunately, I did end up getting, like... Um, spotted by the Yama still uh, because he was just inside our smoke firing penalty um, when I finally got the smoke but 
we did everything we could, and uh, fortunately, we just get lucky, you know? We, we were able to get our heal off, we got enough health back, just enough to survive. So the Yama gets to leave us with just enough to get away. Now, we are running our secondary booster, letting those secondaries just eat. And these SAP secondaries are insane, okay? SAP, once they start finding a position to hit, as you can see, they're going straight up into the superstructure from this angle. So all these shells are just chipping away at that, that Yama's health, slowly but surely. And uh, we take a shot at the San Luis in the background. Our secondary is still yeeting away, and we get the close quarters on the Yama. That should tell you everything you need to know about these SAP secondaries, and that's why I went for a full secondary build. These secondaries DPM, when they get something like, it doesn't matter what it is, it's going to chip. It, I, I had a, uh, to put it in perspective, my first game out, or no, second game out. Second game out, I ended up getting into a close quarters fight with a um, Colbert. And uh, the Colbert's health was rapidly deteriorating just from secondaries alone. And that had nothing to do with me shooting him uh, moments later. But our secondaries chewed him up. And that's what I want to, to showcase the most. But as you guys saw, this thing is not indestructible. You can easily take this. It takes damage from everywhere. Um, that flat side armor, if you're not angled really, really well, you're going to take the damage. But those heals, man, having six heals... That, that do seem to uh, recover decently as well. You, you seem to have a heal available most of the time. Uh, allows you to be a little bit more aggressive and then drop back and then come back a lot healthier. Um, it's it's uh, an interesting little balancing act because you want to be aggressive in the ship, but you don't want to get yourself killed too quickly. You want to you want to be able to stick around. So being able to push forward, eat up a lot of damage, do a lot of uh, potential damage to the enemy, and then back off, heal, come back, and do it again. Um, using the, the, the smokes to your advantage, I cannot stress that enough. Uh, my very first game in this ship was over 180,000 damage. Uh, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a GK and a Yama and just yeeted both of them. Uh, they never even had a chance. Um, it, it's just, it's not a fair fight when you have the ability to disappear and then dictate when you decide to fire. Um, now, I know a lot of people may decide to go like a full accuracy build, and that's a valid strategy. And in that case, I would take and use your accuracy and then switch the secondary booster over to a preferably fighter plane. Uh, catapult fighter will keep the target you're trying to hit spotted while you're in your smoke screen and allow you to really dictate when to shoot and when you have the advantage when you can potentially yeet somebody because these 16 shells man i'm telling you they may not be the biggest shells in the world they may not hit the hardest but by god they are good uh you you will you will do some serious damage with these 15 inch guns so don't undersell them okay don't be shooting nothing but he out of this thing either i see that i'm what this is this is one of those situations where like it drives me crazy like he's going in reverse slightly i was expecting him to gun it forward and of course i go for it and he ends up uh getting away with it but the Henri manages to finish him off we know his torpedoes are coming here so we're going to turn towards them uh we we are healing back so i'm not too worried about the torps uh the enemy san louis gets a fire here we're going to go ahead dc that we know that the dc will still be up by the time or will still be invulnerable to flooding by the time this torp gets to us uh we take the torp as close to the belt as we can Ten thousand damage but uh here you can see the secondaries are disgusting every single shell that hits that target is doing like a thousand damage or 700 plus but uh we aim he actually steers back away from us but our secondaries just come in and clean them up again I'm telling you, man, this, this thing is a secondary powerhouse. If you're not running full secondaries on this thing, I think that uh, you're going to be less than, you know, everybody. There are ships out there. This is something else I'll, I'll point out. Um, as you can see, top of the leaderboard, three kills. We, we did our job, right? But one thing I want to close with, there are ships out there for every role, right? Some ships out there are snipers, a.k.a. Montana. Some ships out there are... Uh, you know, just absolute devastating hitters, aka Yama. Some ships out there are for that uh, big hit with damage over time, aka Conqueror. Uh, and then you have ships that are capable of doing two different roles, depending on what you decide you want to do. But you'll notice that this thing is so good as a secondary brawler 
that I feel like if you go full accuracy on the guns, that you're actually doing yourself a disservice. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, because I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing. Have you guys already unlocked it? I know I'm a little slow at getting things unlocked lately, but I'm trying. I'm trying. It just takes a long time. So let me know. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.